Chapter 20. Brendan Espinoza. Leaf Man wasn't the hit I was hoping for, even though it got a lot of YouTube views. For something to go viral, it has to reach a kind of critical mass where suddenly everybody is talking about it. Poor Leaf Man just didn't have enough legs for that. The bummer is, as great as it was, Leaf Man set me back big time with Kimberly. She's still nice to me, but it might be that she feels sorry for me because she thinks I'm crazy. I'm coming to the conclusion that our senses of humor aren't very compatible. That doesn't mean we aren't compatible, just that we probably won't like the same books, TV shows, movies, that kind of stuff. Besides, she's still totally moon-faced over Chase, so compatibility isn't really an issue right now. The fact that she barely even notices me, that's an issue. Anyway, I've got an idea for a new video, and this one's going to knock her socks off. It doesn't depend so much on humor as creativity and special effects. It's called One Man Band. Picture this, the Hiawassee Music Room. The camera films me pretending to play every instrument in the orchestra in front of a green screen. Then I use the video editing program to superimpose those images onto the various seats on the band risers until I've got a whole orchestra and they're all me, presto, one man band. Joel helps me reserve the room for Thursday after school. The music department is so thrilled to have their star back that Mrs. Gilbride would have promised him her firstborn child. Besides, he's known to be a good kid. It's not like he's going to trash the risers or anything like that. Unfortunately, Chase isn't available to work the camera. He has to take a social studies test he missed due to a follow-up appointment with his falling-off-the-roof doctor. This might be a blessing in disguise because A, Joel volunteers to fill in and he's a pretty good cameraman, and B, Mrs. Gilbride wouldn't let Chase anywhere near her instruments, amnesia or no. She's still mourning that piano like it was donated to the school by Beethoven himself. Also, C, Kimberly is always a little distracted when Chase is around. Maybe that's why she didn't get the humor in Leaf Man. Now, with Chase away writing that test, she'll be able to concentrate on me. I want to rent a tuxedo, since those orchestra guys really put on the ritz. My mom won't spring for it, though, so I do the best I can. I take the light gray suit I wore to this kid's bar mitzvah and paint it with shoe polish. My white shirt has a bit of a stripe in it, but I'm pretty sure it won't show up on camera. There'll be a lot of me, but luckily we'll be pretty small. I borrow a bow tie from my dad to make the whole ensemble more tux-like. When I come out of the bathroom all dressed up on Thursday, Kimberly wrinkles her nose. A very cute look for her, by the way. Dude, you stink. What did you do? Take a back the magic marker? It's shoe polish, I explain. It's not me, it's my clothes. I had to improvise the formal wear. Why can't you wear normal clothes? Because an orchestra dress is fancy. But you're not in an orchestra. Well, if she doesn't pay attention to me, it shouldn't come as a surprise that she doesn't read my text either. On the way to the music room, I get her up to speed on one man band. Her comment is, you're dripping black gunk on the floor. Really? Uh-oh, there's a trail of shoe polish splatters all the way down the hallway. Too late to worry about that now. Once the video is in the can, I'll do my best to clean up after myself. I think rubbing alcohol works on that stuff. Or maybe nail polish remover. Joel is waiting for us inside the music room. He's already put up the video club's green screen and set all the instruments where we're going to need. The flip cam is mounted atop a tripod, another reason why we don't need Chase's steady hand. Joel's got some extra lights plugged in with spaghetti power cords. We're ready to roll. For music, I've chosen a full orchestral version of For He's a Jolly Good Fellow, performed furiously in triple time. I'll add that in during the editing stage, but I play it on my phone during filming so I have the timing right while I'm doing the thing with the instruments. It's not such a big deal with the small stuff, trumpet, clarinet, sax, flute, piccolo, but for the violin and the string family, it's important that my bow should be moving to the right tempo. That goes double for the trombone, the kettle drums, and especially the cymbals. If I go crash, then there'd better be a real crash. I know this song, Kimberly comments after the music has been playing in an endless loop for at least 20 minutes of shooting. How come you pick such a lousy song? We're in the home stretch, bassoon, French horn, and tuba. The tuba is last. I stare at it. It's the marching band kind. When you climb into the middle of it and it's all around you like a pot, all around your body like a python. 
Wait a minute, I protest. Where's the regular one? Dented, Joel replies. Somebody dropped it down the stairs and it's out getting fixed. So this is this one or nothing. Well, you can't have an orchestra without a tuba. I squirm in and struggle to my feet. I swear this thing weighs more than I do. I'm no Hercules, but the kid who plays this thing in marching band is a four foot eight inch sixth grade girl. How does she lift it? Much less have the breath left over to blow into it. Kimberly is regarding me a little dubiously, so I give her my most confident look and announce, piece of cake. It comes out like I'm straining to pass a kidney stone, not the effect I was reaching for. I put my lips to the mouthpiece and nod to Joel to start filming the final shot. The camera comes on. The double doors are kicked open and before I can react, a tidal wave of white foam fills my field of vision. It hits me full in the face. It wouldn't normally be enough to knock me over, but with the heavy tuba, tuba bell suspended above my head, I overbalance and go down like a stone. There's a loud clang as the brass of the instrument strikes the metal edge of the riser. I hear a gasp of horror from Joel, and soon I understand why. When I roll out of the stream of foam, still wrapped in the tuba, I see Aaron Hakeman and Bear Bratsky, each armed with one of the school's big silver fire extinguishers, spraying down the room and everything and everybody in it. Go away! Joel pleads in a quavering voice. Aaron laughs a nasty laugh. Well, if it isn't the loser. I don't think we ever welcomed you back to school. How rude of us. Welcome home, loser, bellows Bear and blasts a jet of foam covering Joel from head to toe. I turn to Kimberly, who's standing there and, of all things, giggling. At long last, the girl has found something funny in one of my videos. She thinks it's part of the plan and doesn't even notice we're under attack. Go get help, I bark at her. Yeah, get help, snorts Bear. Why don't you call your friend Chase? That makes sense to me. He's the only one with half a chance of taking on these two. Get Chase, I yell at Kimberly. Aaron laughs cruelly. And you're supposed to be smart. Who do you figure sent us here, genius? You think Chase doesn't remember the loser who got him put on community service? Bear adds. Go! I shout. He's in Mr. Solomon's room. A blast of foam silences me and I go down again, still encircled by the tuba. Now my arms are pinned at my sides and I can barely move. Not that I'd be much help standing up to those two Neanderthals. And if I'm upset, I can only imagine what must be going on in Joel's mind. After everything he's been through, he's come home only to find that it's starting all over again. Kimberly bolts past the two attackers and out the door. They make no move to stop her. Their focus is on me and mostly on Joel. Hey, check out all these instruments, Bear snickers as if the band room is the last place anyone might expect to find such things. You think if I practice hard, I could become a musician like the great Joel Weber? He delivers a solid boot to the French horn, which skitters across the floor, kicking up a spray from the melting foam that covers half the room. Please don't touch the instruments. Joel whimpers. I promised Miss Gilbride I'd be responsible for everything. Well, that does it. Once those two idiots see how to get a rise out of Joel, they're off to the races, throwing flutes like mini javelins and frisbeeing cymbals all around them. They roll the trumpets and trombones into the slop and send violins floating on top of it. A kettle drum is upended. Music stands are hurled in all directions. Sheet music is scattered like autumn leaves. Still stuck in the tuba, I try to scramble towards Aaron and Bear. I slip on wet paper and hit the floor with another clang. Joel has Aaron by the shoulder and is trying to pull him away from the instruments, but Aaron laughs and shakes him off. Suddenly, Chase barrels into the room, Kimberly hot on his heels. What's going on? He bellows. Dude, what took you so long? Aaron crows in unholy glee. We had to send the chick to get you. This is your best idea yet adds Bear. He hefts his fire extinguisher and hands it to Chase. It's all yours, Maestro. Chase looks totally blown away. I can't read his expression. Shocked or something else? It's your plan, Aaron reminds him. Bring it home. Chase is a statue, eyes wide. Bear gets impatient. Okay, I'll do it for you. He tries to take back the extinguisher, but Chase tightens his grip and holds on. There's a vicious tug of war for the extinguisher. With a mighty yank, Chase wrenches it out of Bear's grip. It swings free, just as Joel rises from the floor where Aaron tossed him. 
With a thud, the heavy metal strikes Joel in the side of the face, and he drops back down into the foam. Agitated voices sounds out in the hallway. Six teachers burst into the music room. Mrs. Gilbride in the lead. What's going on in here? She yells, taking the wreckage all around her. Where's Joel Weber? With a groan, Joel sits up. The foam on his face can't disguise the fact that his left eye is already turning black and blue. That's when it hits me how this must seem to the teachers. The music room is a disaster area. Instruments, music stands, books, and papers are strewn everywhere. The whole place is buried in foam. The school's three most notorious bullies are right there. One of them, Chase, still wields the fire extinguisher. And their number one target, Joel, is down on the floor with a rapid swelling face, obviously the victim of an assault. It isn't what it looks like, I gasp and then bite my tongue. What if it's exactly what it looks like? The idea to send for Chase came from Aaron and Bear. Was that the plan all along? And was Chase the ringleader, just like those guys said? The teachers don't pay attention to me. Their job is diffusing the crisis. Mrs. Gilbride rushes to Joel to see the nurse. And the other staff members march Aaron, Bear, and Chase off to the principal's office. Kimberly follows. Even now, her only concern is Chase. As quickly as that, I'm all alone, still trapped in the marching band's tuba. With a heavy sigh, I struggle up and try to shake myself out of the brass tentacles of this thing. It moves maybe an inch. I'm going to be here all night. As I continue to wiggle and squirm, dripping gray, frothy shoe polish into the foam, I reflect that the worst part of this isn't being stuck in a tuba. It isn't that one man band is never going to happen. It's the sad fact that Kimberly could leave me in such a terrible state just because Chase is in trouble. As soon as I think of that, I realize that the real worm around here has to be me, wormier even, than Aaron and Bear. I care more about my love life than the fact that my friend Chase might not be my friend after all. It isn't true, I told, scold myself. Chase used to be like that, but not anymore. Then there's the evidence of my own eyes and ears. The trashed band room. Another attack on poor Joel. Chase, right alongside his old wrecking crew, delivering the final blow. I sit down on the edge of the riser and hang my head, too depressed to wriggle anymore. The sound of wet sneakers squishing into the slops jolts me out of my melancholy. I look up to see Kimberly standing over me. She says, I thought you might need some help getting out of that thing. My heart soars. Hope.